Greetings. Now, if you're watching this video immediately after the previous video posted on this channel, you saw how in that video, I effectively debunk the narrative of consumer robotics and how consumer robotics has been portrayed as being just around the corner for the last 82 years at least, when in fact, consumer robotics have made very, very little progress in terms of any useful product or any mass market product of real utility. A few niche applications aside, consumer robotics have not met the basic and most high volume use cases that consumers would want from them. However, the opposite is true of truly industrial grade robots. And one very notable example, which you could call a B to B to C application, so to speak, is that of surgical robots. And this is something that has been a very interesting situation in terms of patents blocking innovation, or at least a company being entirely dependent on patents to protect its core product, and therefore not really having an incentive to innovate on that product very much. Intuitive Surgical is a company that created the Da Vinci robot, which does certain surgeries. And as you can see from this picture over here, it does not look like a human. It in fact has multiple arms and the patient goes underneath it and the surgeon controls the arms from a monitor elsewhere in the room and other surgical staff watch and assist as needed. This product was released in 1999 and it costs $2 million and it has around 400 patents protecting the innovation and therefore Intuitive Surgical has been able to sell a product that it has not been forced to innovate on. The Da Vinci robot is therefore relatively unchanged since 2001 or earlier and aside from a few small electronic upgrades, it's really not even kept up with innovations in personal computer improvement because it's protected by over 400 patents. Now there have been a lot of media articles for the last five years about how certain patents are about to expire for the Da Vinci robot, but the reason you've been seeing those articles for many years is that because there's 400 patents, they weren't all granted on the same day. Patents have a 20 year period before they expire, and therefore individual patents out of those 400 are continually expiring. Now as time passes, more and more of them expire and more startups can enter the surgical robotic space without having to design around intuitive surgical's patents. And by 2021, enough of those patents have expired that many products are coming on the market. Remember that intuitive surgical Da Vinci robot costs $2 million and therefore there are only about 2000 of them in use over the world. And more than half of those are in the United States. So less than 800 are outside the United States. And sure, because of the number of years, some hundreds of thousands of surgeries have been done by the Da Vinci robot, but it's still a very small percentage of the market. And if the cost and performance improvement were allowed to proceed at the rate of other electronics products, then the robot would be much further along and the surgical outcomes for patients would be much further along. But thankfully that is about to happen and even intuitive with its large market cap of $100 billion now, will be forced to innovate and therefore will contribute a lot to innovation. Now, why is a surgical robot an improvement for the patient? Well, just think about it. Surgeries required the surgeon's hands to go inside the patient. Therefore, for a heart surgery before these robots, the patient usually had to have their sternum sawed open or a rib sawed so that the surgeon's hands could get in there. Now, because the robot has a much narrower set of instruments, it can go between ribs and do a heart surgery without any sawing of bone and therefore the recovery times for patients are often five to six times as fast. Instead of an eight week recovery, you might have a one or one and a half week recovery period from a surgery. Even surgeries that don't involve sawing of bones like a kidney surgery, it's done with much smaller incisions and therefore recoveries are very fast. Within four to five days, the patient might at least be able to get off painkillers and drive a car. Whereas in the past that would take three weeks or so. So the recovery time and precision of surgeries has improved, but there is yet another benefit. Since all these robots, at least from one company like Intuitive Surgical, the Da Vinci robots are connected to the cloud, every surgery done by every robot goes into a database that all robots, no matter where they are in the world, can access. Therefore, there is a tremendous amount of cumulative learning from those 2000 entry points. And therefore, it's going to have more experience than any human surgeon. The human surgeon is still operating the robot, of course, but the library of prior surgeries it has to draw from easily exceeds what any human surgeon could ever have experienced in their life or could look up in any manual sense. So that is a secondary benefit. That benefit is going to be the one that rises much faster when the patents expire because then you will have many small companies with rival surgical robots all drawing upon a library of surgeries that were done in the past. Now this does face the problem that is faced in almost every area of technology which is the winner-take-all syndrome. 
just like Google and Facebook are near monopolies because the efficiency of each platform rises as a square of the number of users and therefore nobody wants to use the third or fourth best product. The same will happen with these surgical robots, unfortunately, unless there is some regulation that allows all prior surgeries to be accessible by all robotic companies for the benefit of the patient and the data from each is transcoded into a universal format. Now that's a very technical subject, but we're soon going to see a wave of much more advanced and much less expensive surgical robots hit the marketplace as the patents on the Da Vinci expire and then it gets caught up to the trend line. Since the Da Vinci's price point and electronics are still pretty much the same as they were in 2001, all the new 2021 and 2022 products will be substantially more advanced just for reasons of processing and memory improvement. So that is something to look for. And this will be seen in better and better patient outcomes, especially in terms of recovery times and side effects of surgery and other such things, which all get minimized. It also hacks away at healthcare costs. The US healthcare system is extremely resistant to cost improvements because there's too many people who need the problem not to be fixed. But robots like this actually reduce the cost of a surgery in many indirect ways, partly because patients usually go home after just one night in the hospital rather than six or eight nights in the hospital, for example, or sometimes even go home the same day. Therefore, hospital bed usage and nurse time and all that gets slashed dramatically through another technological disruption, an atom disruption, as fans of my atom publication will recognize. So I'm going to have more on this topic in the future as companies that come out with compelling surgical robots emerge and I will profile a few of them on this channel if their innovation is a substantial quantum leap improvement relative to the intuitive surgical da Vinci robot. And therefore, instead of just 2000 surgical robots in operation across the world, we may soon get to 20,000, 200,000, and therefore even used in poorer countries that could never have afforded a $2 million da Vinci robot. And therefore the patients in those countries could not have availed themselves of a more advanced surgery. That is an example of leapfrogging that could in fact occur here. Something to look forward to. I hope you found this video informative. And if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.